In this lecture, we will discuss light and its interaction with matter. Now, inside light, we will say that it is an electromagnetic wave. And in this spectrum, this is having a large spectrum. So we will only focus on the visible spectrum. And inside the visible spectrum, we know that we call it a white light, a like colorless light. And inside this visible spectrum, we are having seven colors. So those seven colors are not visible unless and until this light interact with matter. So we will now focus on that interaction, that what kind of interaction takes place. So having this thing in mind that light is in electromagnetic wave and it is composed of very small particles. These particles can be called as corpuscles, quanta or photons and these particles are actually flowing in the form of a wave. So flowing in a wave. Now we will discuss that is it is an electromagnetic wave so in vacuum it travels at a speed of light which is 2.99 10 raised to the power 8 meter per second and in other medium this speed lowers a bit now when this light will interact with matter so from matter it is any other medium except vacuum. Vacuum is also a form of matter and we are considering this out of the vacuum because in vacuum the things are constant while in matter it may be air, it may be a glass or water or any other medium. So, air is something which is very close to vacuum, but it is not vacuum. Now, when this light will interact with matter, then we will have this light can reflect, and from this reflection, we will have the phenomenon of reflection. This light can refract. We will define this. Take what are these terminologies and we will have the phenomenon of refraction. This light can disperse in a medium and we will say that this will give rise to the phenomenon of dispersion. And this light can diffract, which will give rise to the phenomenon of diffraction. Similarly, this light can polarize, and this will give rise to the phenomenon of polarization of light. And this can scatter as well, and this will cause the scattering of light. And finally, we will have the combination of many such phenomena which we call the interference. Interference. So, it can interfere and this interference, this we will say that, that the way it interfere is generating the phenomenon of interference. So, we are having this is the interaction of light with matter and these will generate some daily life 
observed phenomena. For example, it can cause the very first thing, the observation of colors. We see colors due to some phenomena here are the interaction of light we with matter we are having colors now inside these colors we see the blue sky so this will give us the reasons they why the sky is blue and further we see the green gardens green leaves green trees green gardens we see rainbow after raining we observe a beautiful combination of a curved colors and we say that rainbow has appeared and further we can say that with the blue sky we are having the blue oceans as well and we are having white clouds clouds are white milky white and the yellowish sun normally the sun appears yellowish this sun when it is rising or when it is falling then on the horizon it seems reddish yellowish so why that color is and when we look at the thin layer of greasy surface for example it may be a soap bubble it may be some oil on water or any other greasy type on water layer so it shines it has some colors we are having the phenomenon of the mileage which is also an example of this optical phenomena that we see and we observe some colors on the CD DVD disc CD DVD discs are having those colors and many more we observe in the daily life and we will see that they are all actually the result of the interaction of light that the interaction of light with matter that gives us so many beautiful colors whatever colors we are having on the globe means we are having here on the globe as well as in the skies are actually due to the atmosphere the atmosphere of our globe if we will have no atmosphere then we would not be able to see the different phenomena of colors appearance and all these things we will not see they are all due to the atmosphere that we have so we will we will start with this now when i consider light the visible spectrum it is white light and this white light is actually composed of seven colors which we call is web glare so violet indigo blue green yellow orange and red and out of this we are having the r g and b the red the green 
the blue green being the center of it and the blue these is the primary colors and their combination is actually giving us these two means violet and indigo the high frequency colors and orange and red are actually the low frequency colors these two the green and the yellow are the matte colors and we are having this light the white light is like a thread and this thread is composed of seven different color threads but we don't see any color in this light this is why colorless light unless and until it interacts with matter so we will have to understand the interaction of light with matter this is very important to understand that interaction so now when we consider the light is a wave then we are having this shape in our mind that this is a wave which is going and now it is having a certain wavelength so many waves can go like this and those waves may be planar in nature or they may be spherical in nature for example if they are passing if they are passing through a given plane then we will say that these are actually the plane waves going in this direction so i can write this thing is that the waves are actually the plane waves here so they will go like a plane and similarly we can have these waves generating from a source and let's say this is a source in this source is actually generating some spherical waves so around it there are although on the board i am just plotting circles but consider them in 3d is spherical means the sphere shape and like this so these are like when we throw when we throw a pebble in a pond and the waves are spreading like this so we are having the waves this is the representation now if they are plane waves then these will be called is the this one or this one we call them wave fronts so the wave fronts the wave fronts are actually possessing all the properties of a wave for example the speed of this wave front at this point or any other point on this will remain the same similarly here as well this wave front will have all the properties associated with that wave this is this is called the physical interpretation of the wave and which generates the physical optics the physical representation so it generates the physical optics and similarly if i do like this that i represent this with the help of rays these wave fronts with the help of rays then these rays these lines are actually i am calling is rays so it is just another representation to do this thing similarly here i will have this is the spherical body which is the source and the wave fronts are actually going this way that way and here as well so let me draw some intermediate lines here 
and here as well. So here, this is, these are actually now rays here. These rays are representing the spherical nature of this wave source. So is these are some geometrical lines, means these rays are lines. So the ray diagram or the lines diagram we call is geometrical optics. Geometrical optics. When we represent it as a wave, means as a wave front, then we will call physical optics. When we will represent it with lines or rays, we will call it geometrical optics. So with the help of these, now we will understand to um, how to understand these different phenomena of which are the result of light interaction with matter. We will restrict ourselves to the lines only because it is always uh, hard to do the wave fronts there. So the wave fronts, this representation and this representation are actually the same thing. One is the ray diagram, the other is the wave front diagram. So from now on, we will keep with the geometrical lines and we will understand what is reflection, what is refraction, dispersion, diffraction, polarization, scattering and interference.